everyone, and welcome to the Change Your Game with GTD podcast. I'm here, as always, with Robert Peake. Hello. And for many of you, you will be surprised to see, uh, well, frankly, pr- surprised to see us. We're doing this for the first time as a as a video podcast. I'm hoping that that's going to um, help you, uh, well, get, get a sense from our, our body language and, and kind of maybe the way we move and maybe make it a little bit more engaging and a bit more entertaining. So very much, uh, very much an experiment. Be interested in your feedback on this after we've, uh, after you've had a chance to, to, to watch it. Um, and our, th- our themes in these podcasts really are to help you to get the most from the Getting Things Done methodology, to help you to refine your ways of working, refine your thinking, uh, and ultimately um, to lead more fulfilled and successful lives in whatever way that you define success. And Robert, you know, when we were talking just before, the, uh, before we kicked off here, we were talking about a topic that you and I... Um, uh, I think it resonated with us both, and I think it may come as a surprise to a lot of the folks listening and watching. This this theme of of heroism, this this theme of heroes, and uh, we both were talking about how in the work that we do, um, it's really important for us that that our clients are successful. And and you know, I think in and I was telling you a little bit of a story about some some marketing material that I'd seen recently, which focused on the fact that in storytelling, um, in marketing in particular, quite often the, uh, the service provider, you know, the consulting firm or the retailer or whoever is depicted as the hero. Um, whereas I think we very much see that if we're going to be successful, we're making heroes, heroes out, of our, out of our clients, out of the people that we work with. Does that, does that resonate with you? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think um, at the end of the day, you know, we kind of point the way and we point the way in, in a lot of different ways and through a lot of different modalities and and by embodying and living these principles. Right. I mean, that that's a lot of it is we, we do this stuff day in and day out um, and have for many, many years. But after all that said and done, you know, the reality is the, the client does the work. Right. You know, in, in coaching, in, in seminars, in um, all of the different um, ways that we get this out there, we really are um, kind of showing the way, pointing the way. Uh, in some cases, letting people know that there is, in fact, a better way. That there is a way to to instead of just having to lean in and push harder, um, a way to work smarter and more effectively um, through awareness and through applying a lot of these principles. Um, but awareness alone doesn't get you there, right? You know, awareness alone doesn't do it. And we were talking about different <clears throat> different examples. You know, I mean, Luke, Luke Skywalker had to go and and actually, um, you know, lift the lift his um, his starship out of the moat himself. He couldn't have just kind of taken in Yoda's little um, ungrammatical platitudes, you know, and, and enjoyed them for what they were. He had to, he had to work it. He had to practice it. He had to do it. Um, and I think you know that's absolutely a part of. Um, part of the deal with with GTD as well. So I do very much celebrate uh, clients when when they have successes. You know, one of, my, one of the things I do as a coach is I collect um, screenshots of empty inboxes. So it's, people collect stamps, some people, you know, collect butterflies. <laughs> so that's one of mine. But it really is a moment of, wow, hey, you know, I bet you didn't know, you didn't think this was possible and here you are. And, and it's really good for you, not you know, good for me. I, I'm not the one that processed every single one of those. I'm the one that showed the process to get to get to zero. So it, yeah, it really struck me that that is uh, that that is true. That we are enabling, I think, a certain kind of heroism, a certain kind of thing you can feel good about, a certain kind of really personal best that that you can attain. That again, part of what we do is say, look. I bet you didn't even think this was possible as a kind of personal best for you. Mm. Yeah. I, I don't want to make this a, 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 a podcast all about uh, Star Wars, but just as you're talking about it, it occurs to me, you know, there is that there is that scene where um, uh, just before Luke lifts his uh, lifts his ship out of the out of the moat, um, he says to Yoda, he says, I'll try. And Yoda says, no do or do not there is no try and i think it sort of echoes what you were just saying part of our role as coaches is to help people to think differently right to change their mindsets to change how they how they frankly confront and 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 address their work um and that might be another good example of this um as i'm thinking about this i'm uh 
I'm reminded of a, a time in, in, a, in a previous life when I was working at a large corporate. I was in the, the IT division at this large corporate and um, very, very time sensitive kind of environment. Lots of things happening, a uh, lot of pressure to make sure that, that things were, uh, you know, the software that was written was bug, bug free and that, you know, the infrastructure was solid and all of that, you know, all of those kinds of things. And one of the things that we recognized over time in the, in the organization was that the kind of behavior that we were rewarding, in other words, the people that we considered heroes, were the people who, when, you know, when the stuff hit the fan, when, when things went wrong, were the ones who wrote it on their white nights and, you know, made all of those things right, right? They corrected them. Uh, and there was very little time, or there was less, put it this way, there was less um, acknowledgement, less focus given to the people who were working sort of behind the scenes on the on the process of making sure that these problems didn't happen in the first place right and so again i think it, it comes down to uh what kind of behavior do we want to uh do we want to uh, foster what kind of behavior do we want to reward is the you know is the the hero the one who uh who is 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 fixing the problems or is the hero the the person who's um you know uh, um, doing the work that means the problems aren't happening in the first place yeah, I think that's a great point. You know, I think um, 11th hour heroism <laughs> certainly is in a lot of cultures, and in particularly I see in the IT space, something where you know, pulling it out of the bag at the last minute, often at great personal cost under stressful situations, um, is is rewarded externally, and you get the kind of adrenaline buzz of that as, as well. Um, but it's just not sustainable. You know, it's 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 not sustainable for the individual. It's not sustainable for the organization because eventually, you know, people people get tired of <laughs> pulling it out of the bag um, at at the last minute. Um, and then and then you're looking for well, you know, is is there is there something else? Is there a you know what what about wisdom? <laughs> you know, rather rather than just sheer um, um, sheer gumption in terms of you know pushing these things through. And I think. Um, for a lot of people, heroism is kind of equated with with pushing, and and again, that thing that that's you know, in order to have success, a certain amount of stress has to be abided, has to be kind of allowed into our lives. Um, and I think we really challenge that, and I think we challenge for some people the notion of of what it is to be heroic, what it is to succeed, um, you know, in in the modern workplace, because. Again, there's a lot of that rewarding of um, the the late last minute um, push. It's also it's also more visible in a way, right? You see the people that are there, you know, <laughs> at, at 8 p.m. on a Friday, um, if you're there as well to see them. Um, so you know, there, there you can get into this culture, but it's it's very clear that you know that a lot of that is diminishing returns. You know, I, I've certainly found. Um, working later and longer leads you generally to a lot more mistakes. And a lot of those places where you're making stuff that you do have to clean up later, um, to me, show up in, in the times when rather than being relaxed and present, you're, you're stressed, you're, you're tired, um, and, and you're pushing harder. So I think it's a revelation to some people that it's possible to be, uh, to be a champion, to be a success, to be a leader, to be inspiring to others. Um, through your ability to think, to work smart, to to think things through thoroughly and well, to create clarity within the organization rather than um, just you know creating creating fires and then putting them out, you know, in, in that sense. So, yeah, I've, I've, I think with a lot of people that the, the notion of what it means to be successful or even heroic um, comes into question and gets shaken up when we start to work with them. In the GTD process, I don't know. Is that has that been uh, been I, your experience to some extent? Yeah, I think that's right. And and I think another important point maybe to make is that that the definition of success, the definition of of heroism, isn't something that we impose, right? In other words, you can define your own success within within getting things done. Right? There's someone who um, you know I'm, I'm thinking of a client of mine who is um, incredibly diligent, works regularly, works kind of sixty plus hours um, in any given week, um, uh, very successful in terms of his own organization, you know, uh, very much seen as an up and comer. Um, and that's how he's driven. That's, that's how he wants to spend his time. I'm not going to get in the way of that. 
um, you know, if that's what success and uh, if that's what good looks like to him, then great. Then that we've got all kinds of things that we can offer that help. Um, on the other end of the spectrum, you know, you've got people who are who are in essence saying, "Hey, what I'd really like to do is get as much done as I'm getting done today, and get it done in you know 80 percent of the time, right? So that I free up time for." for um, you know, spending more time with my friends, with my family, for getting out of the office on time, you know, all those kinds of things. So ultimately, you know, the, the, the definition of hero is we don't walk in and say, okay, here's what successful looks like. We walk in and say, what do you want success to look like? In, in a sense, you know, define your own heroism. Absolutely right. Yeah. And I think, um, I think you know, it's a, it's a question of sort of time or investment of time, and let's call it energy, versus results at the end of the day, you know? I mean, um, I don't think, um, you know, Fro Frodo was a hero in The Lord of the Rings because he got the ring to Mordor, right? Because <laughs> he did it, not because he took a long time to do it, not because, you know, he was there a lot of nights and weekends, you know, thinking, you know, working on the ring and working on the ring problem for the firm. Um, it's, it's the result, right? It's the, it's the, the having done it, having overcome. Um, that ultimately is the mark of the kind of sense of the mark of a hero. And one of the really interesting things I think about the hero's journey that we talked about, whether it's Frodo or Luke Skywalker or any of these in these kind of epic genres with this with this arc of the heroic progression, is that the hero we meet at the start of the journey never could have accomplished that. Right? Never could have done that. Frodo was too scared. You know, Luke was, you know, just had didn't even hadn't even tapped into that thing called the force um, yet at all. Didn't know what that was, um, didn't understand where he came from um, or, or what he needed to do even. And, I, you know, I see that a lot uh, to some extent, you know, with with our clients. And, and again, I think the, the po one of the points you're making is they all encounter some kind of guide. They, they encounter their Yoda, their Obi-Wan, their Gandalf. Um, their their circle of friends who will support them once they set forward that intention. Look, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but I'm going to do this, right? And once they make that choice, the help shows up, the support shows up. Um, and I think a lot of that, uh, you know, I, I find a lot of that with with our clients as well. At some point, they go, you know, what got me here isn't going to get me there. I need to work differently. I need to work smarter. I know what I want. I'm setting out that intention, whether it's the next promotion or more time with the kids or whatever that is. I know what success looks like. I know what my, you know, my hero's journey is, and I don't know how to get there. And, and, but I do know that I can't get there doing what I've been doing up until now. So um, that's part of the fun is when we do come in and, and the client really is in that, that place of I have a clear intention. I know where I want to go. Um, and I, I know there's got to be a way. Um, a lot of what we do is show the way. Really, is 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 kind of that's kind of the most we can do is show the way really fully, really thoroughly, really practically. You know, get them get them doing it, coach them along in that, um, support them as they go. Um, but then they make the journey. They actually make the journey, and then they get they get the result of that. Um, and it's a great thing to see, and particularly to look back, um, you know, often one of the things I do with clients is look back on some of those early states and early intentions and, hey, look at look at the you, you know, at the start of this journey with, you know, 5,000 emails in the inbox and, you know, zero time in the diary to deal with anything but back-to-back -back meetings and, you know, the levels of, of stress you're feeling and, and the, you know, just the lack of sustainability and look at where you are now. And it's a great, it's a great moment, you know, and, and I feel proud of them because again, they've, they've achieved that um, through setting a clear intention, through realizing, I don't know how I'm going to get there. And then through reaching out for, for help basically. So I don't know. Is that, is that, yeah. um, yeah, no, with you. I mean, <laughs> in a sense, what, what we're, what, what you're saying is we, if we're successful, then we are the, uh, we are the we are the Yodas and the Gandalfs, right? We are, we are the Hope, hopefully more grammatical in our presentation <laughs> things, but not always. I yeah. have to work. I think I'll have to work a bit on the beard, but you know, we're we're kind of we're headed in the right direction. But no, I, I think that's right. I think it's um, ultimately, if we do our jobs well, we're we're finding out. Uh, you know, we're finding out first what does what does success look like, and that's always going to be a very individual thing. 
um, success for me doesn't look like success for the people that I coach. So my for, my job first is to understand what does that look like. What's your what's your desired end state, and, and to get a really rich understanding of that uh, as far as possible, and then to work with them toward that. And 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 I think you know the point you've made about about having the chance to you know, to go back and, and touch base with them and say, Hey, you know, how is it going? And, and celebrate the success, right. As you say, and also do any retrofitting that seems appropriate. You know, I think one of the things I sometimes encounter in the work is that, you know, people, if they've at all fallen off the wagon, as far as they perceive whatever falling off the wagon means, um, they, they feel a bit sheepish about it. You know, they feel as though they've, they've sort of failed in a way. And what I try to do in those moments is encourage, you know, again, encourage different thinking. You know, uh, we all fall off the wagon, myself included, David Allen included, right? We all fall off the wagon. It's not about, it's not about once you've understood this theoretically, yeah, from now on, you should be able to implement it flawlessly. And anytime you don't, you have, you have failed. It's really about um, at any given moment, you know, what, what would be helpful for you to get you back to a place of relaxed, focused control. Um, and that may be that, you know, yeah, your email inbox was at zero and now it's up at 150 and you're feeling like you're quite overwhelmed by that. Or you're feeling like um, you're being too driven by your email inbox, right? Whatever it is, um, if we're doing our jobs, we're helping them to, um, you know, to, 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 to keep the focus and not to get into this mindset that says, yeah, the only, the only way I'm gonna do this is if I do it perfectly. No, that's absolutely right. And as you're talking about that, I realize that's that's an important part of the hero's journey too. Actually, in terms of the dramatic structure of these of these kind of um, epic tales, right? I mean, um, there has to be a dark moment. There has to be a moment where all hope seems lost, right? You know, the empire strikes back, and Luke discovers the bad guys his dad and loses his his hand, right? You know, or um, you know, Frodo's surrounded by orcs, you know, storming the um, storming the keep and all hope seems lost and yet their perseverance their determination their their clear focus on i'm not giving up you know i'm going to reach this thing ultimately leads to some ex unexpected turn and suddenly there's there's some light some hope there's a dawn moment um, and they're able to continue on and it's absolutely necessary and you'll see it time and time again any kind of hero's journey has to have setbacks to keep our attention because if it was just, I didn't know how to get there, someone came along, they showed me the way, and boom, I was there. Um, you know, what they imparted would have been really, you know, something like a, a, a bag of tricks or a, a few things that you didn't know that you should have known. You know, some, some element, pretty elementary stuff. But what we're talking about in the hero's journey is the stuff that transforms you. The stuff that actually the hero has to change in order for the circumstances to change, in order for them to get to that success point that they've identified and committed to for themselves. So if this was, you know, if this was easy stuff, you know, in a way we'd all probably be, be doing it by now. We wouldn't need a whole lot of, um, you know, outside support. And, you know, it would just be, be one of those things. But the reality is because it, it can change how you work, how you think, how you operate, how you relate to the world in very positive ways. Um, and sometimes subtle, but but profound ways. Um, necessarily, there's going to be setbacks and challenges, you know. And the world's going to, in a sense, say, Are "You sure you really want to work this way? You don't know, you just want to go back to kind of the old habits we've been doing this for a long time? Don't you want to just, you know, just just slide back into what's comfortable?" Um, and and you know, there there is a, a choice point there too. So th there's the initial commitment, and then there's these there's these challenges that that necessarily show up. So I tell people, look, falling off the wagon is part of the journey. It's part of getting back on the wagon and getting going. And if if it didn't happen, I'd be surprised, frankly. I'd be surprised if there weren't some setbacks mm -hmm. along the way that was you, in a sense, proving to yourself, no, I'm really committed to this. No, it's been a really busy, crazy week, and I'm going to do the week through for you anyway. You know, no, the you know the imperial stormtroopers are are have surrounds completely, and I'm gonna fight my way out of this thing. One one email at a time, one stormtrooper at a time. I'm I'm gonna do this. So I think that's a really important point that people um, that people we love in the dramatic stories, and we miss in our own lives that no setbacks are part are part of the journey. Mm. 
Yep, I think that's right. And I think that one of the things that kind of that kind of uh, can be unfortunate in people's perception of the work that we do is because so much of it is, um, you know, as David Allen himself says, it's 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 some some of it comes across as common sense on steroids, right? That people then feel like, well, it does seem theoretically fairly straightforward and therefore any lack of success in actually implementing it must be down to some some failure in me you know but but again to your point i think that uh reminding people that that is you know all part of the journey that is just part of what we're all doing in this i know, I know we're kind of coming to the end of our time robert is there any you know just thinking about this as a as a frame for advice for people anything you know if you had sort of a top tip for uh for folks about about their own perception of success or their own you know their own hero's journey in GTD, what would what would that be? Well, I think we need to to redefine heroism a bit. You know that it's about achieving the results that are satisfying to you and that matter to you. It's not about impressing people with the amount of time or stress or busyness or wearing <laughs> wearing a badge of honor. Um, out of your um, out of your raggedness, um, it is possible to be an inspiring leader um, and to take the time you need to think things through very carefully, um, you know, and to um, achieve those things that matter to you uh, with relaxed focus, with clarity, um, and with a sense of purpose. So, figure out what you want, commit to it. Um, and you may be surprised that it can happen in a lot more easy, graceful, elegant ways than than you thought. That's that's my hope for everyone. What about you, Todd? Yeah, I, I would absolutely echo that. I think that's I think that's very well said. I think as well, um, you know, being on the one hand, being clear about what uh, you know what success for you looks like, but also being open to the possibility that as you progress on the journey, that definition of success, if you will, that definition of heroism may change, right? And that you may decide that the outcome that you really thought was important to you is something that on on balance actually needs refinement or needs, you know, deletion, you know, isn't really all that important to you after all. So so um, being being nimble and flexible as you make your way through your day, letting letting the evolution the evolution that's happening out there in the world and the evolution that's happening inside of you in terms of your own thoughts and feelings, letting all of that um, Stay, staying open to all of that because it may well help you to to focus your time and energy mo most effectively um, on an ongoing basis. Great stuff. Yeah. Good. Well, thank you all for joining us today for the Change Your Game with GTD podcast. Um, as always, please stay in touch. Very, very happy to hear from you. We do get pretty regularly suggestions about topics from um, from our our listeners and now viewers. Um, also very interested in your feedback about the video format. Um, and Robert and I look forward to talking to you and seeing you again next time.